Well, I got started with my addiction when I was about 14. Um, I remember the first time that I got drunk. Um, I was on a little country road out in a, I lived in a little town, grew up in a little town, and I was on a little country road with a group of friends and had been drinking one night. And all I really remember about that is I started drinking around 8 o'clock at night and I came to about midnight laying in the floor at my mom and dad's house with my little four-year-old sister kicking me in the head saying, are you dead? Please don't be dead. And I remember waking up, coming to with her kicking me in the head. I was sick. I was sick in my stomach. I crawled to the bathroom, spent the rest of the night in the bathroom throwing up. And the next day thinking, man, that was fun. I'm going to have to do that again. And that's how my addiction started. I can't do, I gotta have some help, please help me. And the doctor that I was going to, that, that I was seeing um, said, I want you in the hospital tonight, basically. Good drug addict that I am said, uh, well, you know, I got these tickets to this concert tomorrow night. Could we wait till Thursday to put me in the hospital? <laughs> and he said, no, <laughs> you're going to the hospital tonight. <laughs> Give the tickets to somebody else. <laughs> I was on a Tuesday, and he put me in the hospital and kept me on the ho in the hospital till Friday or Saturday. I'm not really sure which, but he kept me in the hospital for three or four days and detoxed me and took me all the drugs out of my system and the booze out of my system. And I got out of the hospital, and I was okay, great. I'm going to be able to stay clean and sober. This is going to be wonderful. And I had a bunch. I had a bunch of pot at my house. And uh, I decided I was going to take all the pot to my boyfriend's house because this is drug addict thinking. I was going to get rid of it, but I wasn't going to throw it away or flush it because that's worth too much money and you just, you know, don't do that. So I was going to take it to my boyfriend's house and give it to him. So I packed up all my drugs and took them to my boyfriend's house for the weekend to leave them with him and tell him goodbye. And, you know, I was going to make it real dramatic and I was going to be sober now. And went to his house and spent the night at, over with him and immediately got high, spent the weekend drinking and drugging and partying with him, and was just full of shame and guilt and remorse and horrified at the fact that when I woke up on Sunday morning, there I was again after I'd just spent the whole week in detox. And what, a, what happened for me in that moment is a complete surrender. And I just looked up at the sky and I said, you know, God, if you're not there, I'm s I had that moment happen to me where I knew that in and of myself, I could not stay sober. I couldn't stay clean. I couldn't do this by myself. I had to have God do it for me. If I just didn't drink today, if I just didn't drug today, that I was going to be better. Miraculously, God worked miraculously in my life during that time. Uh, God began to heal my relationships with my daughters. Um, he began to heal me emotionally. He began to heal me spiritually and physically. You know, I've been given a second life. It's almost as if I've lived two completely different lives. I have this life in the past of this broken, beaten, lost individual who had no hope and no future. And today I have the life of a woman who lives freedom from bondage, freedom from fear. There are possibilities alive and well in my life today. I have hope for a future today. I have friends and relationships in my life that are incredible today. It's an awesome life that God's given me.